With just five colors and a handful of layers, you can create the perfect blood drip that every horror enthusiast dreams about. All resources featured here today can be found on Envato Elements, where you get unlimited downloads of graphics, photos, and fonts, millions of creative digital assets with simple commercial licensing. I'm Abby Esparza with Envato Touch Plus. Let's jump right into it. To start everything off, I'm going to do some mild color grading. First, a brightness contrast adjustment layer right above the subject layer, setting it to negative 28 brightness, and 9 contrast. Next, we're going to create a new group and name it Color Grade. In this group, we're going to place three different adjustment layers, which will remain at the top of our layer stack from here on out. First, a color lookup adjustment layer set to Foggy Night at 16% opacity, and a layer mode of Multiply. Second, a selective color adjustment layer affecting the reds, yellows, whites, neutrals, and blacks, setting its opacity to just 28%. And third, a curves adjustment layer with the top anchor pulled inward just slightly an opacity of 75%, and an adjusted blend if setting, a mimicking what you see here. Remember to hold Alt when adjusting the blend if toggles to split them in half, like this. And that'll be it for our color grade. Go ahead and collapse the group, and remember all future layers will be placed below this group and above the brightness contrast layer. So, on to the blood. First, we're going to create a blood color swatch set consisting of these five colors seen here. I'll refer to them as dark red, medium red, light red, and white from here on out. Let's create a new layer setting it to multiply. With the dark red shade, paint the base of your blood. This will be the general shape you want your blood to be in. Use a hard round brush to paint your blood base. Don't be afraid of simple shapes, and assuming you don't mind the sight of blood, looking at references is also a great idea. Next, create a new layer, clipping it into the blood base layer. Now using a soft round brush, we're going to fill in part of the base with the medium red color. We are filling everything but the ends of the drips and the area the blood is flowing out of. These areas are where the blood would be the thickest. The thicker the blood, the darker the blood. So create and clip a new layer above the last clipped layer. On this layer, we're going to paint red using a soft round brush set to a very low flow rate. You'll adjust the flow rate as you go, but starting with around 10% should work fine. Because we're going to use this bright red to start establishing the flowing motion of our blood. As blood flows, it leaves a trail. The drop is the head of the trail and would be the darkest due to it being the most highly concentrated amount of blood. As blood flows, it leaves less blood behind. It all comes down to lighting. If large amounts of light are hitting the blood, it will shine through it. Blood isn't opaque, it's partially transparent. Light can shine through it unless there is a high concentration of blood blocking that light. So, to summarize, the darker the blood, the less light is hitting it, or there is a high concentration of blood there to block that light. The lighter the blood, the less blood there is, or there is a strong, strong light that is able to penetrate the blood. This will take some practice, but you can use multiple layers, always feel free to undo, and I promise you do not need to be a digital painter to nail this. Now we're going to enhance the shapes we just made. 
Create and clip a new layer, setting it to 50% opacity or so. On this layer, use dark red to further shape your blood, like enhancing what you painted in the previous step, adding new shadows, or darkening the drops further. Now that our base is done and we have a blob of red, we need to give it some depth and weight by adding shadows. This effect really hinges on its shadows and highlights. Create a new layer below the blood base, setting it to multiply. Color pick a dark shadow tone from your subject. Now using a soft round brush with a low flow, build up shadows below the drips of blood. Only the heavy parts would be casting a shadow, the parts of blood that are thick enough to be blocking light. So before we can get to what I think is the absolute best part of painting blood, we need a custom brush. We're going to start with a default round brush. And then next, we're going to set the brush settings to the following. For the brush tip shape, we have a size of 40 pixels and a spacing set to 16%. In shape dynamics, we have a size jitter of 50%. In dual brush, we have the brush set to the default soft round brush, a size of 115%, a spacing set to 100%, and a scatter of 20%, with a count of 2. We want transfer just to be checked. A checking transfer will enable pressure controls if you have a pen tablet, but this is unnecessary this time around if you're just using a mouse. Then we're going to go ahead and check wet edges, build up, and smoothing. With the settings finished, we can hit the create new brush button found in the bottom right hand corner of the brush settings panel. Naming the brush Wet Shine and checking the Capture Brush Size and Preset. With that, we're ready to go. And finally, to my favorite part, the highlights. Create a new layer above the blood base and its clipped layers, setting its opacity to 90%. Paint in your highlights using white. I like to set the brush size between 3 to 6 pixels, though this just depends on the size of highlights you are painting. Make some highlights bigger, others smaller, some long, and some short. Concentrate the highlights on the darker, thicker areas of blood. This is where the blood would be catching and reflecting the most amount of light. I use Ctrl Z often, placing dots and then undoing if I don't like them, and then I place more. You can also use a soft eraser brush to taper highlights, or fade them so they aren't as strong. Finish up with some layer highlights by creating a new layer and painting blobs of white uh, using that drip brush over the larger surfaces of blood. Next, add a layer mask and then mask on three of the four sides of each blob placed, creating almost a gradient effect, with each blob having one side and then fading outward. This will create a really nice surface highlight ideal for the smoother areas where blood is flowing, those really large surface areas.
Create a new layer, set the overlay, and paint varying shades of red around the eye and the thicker parts of blood. You can also use this layer to enhance some of the shadows underneath the blood base. And the really nice thing about these blood drips is that they can be easily grouped, copied, and then placed on other areas of the skin. Next, let's cover blood splatters. To create blood splatter, we're going to follow most of the same steps as before, only this time it'll be even easier. Create a new layer, set the multiply, and then using a blood splatter brush like this one from Envato Elements, paint some blood splatters using a bright red color. Create and clip a new layer into the blood splatter layer, setting it to multiply. Paint dots of medium red in the middle of each larger splatter of blood using a soft round brush. Leave the smaller spots of blood a bright red. And then you're just going to place a dot of white in the middle of each dark blood spot to create a nice juicy highlight. You can of course add multiple dots of highlights depending on the shape of the splatter. The bigger the splatter, the more room for highlights. And that is all there is to creating blood effects in Photoshop. But if that wasn't enough and you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other excellent videos that Envato Touch Plus has to offer. If you like this video and would like to see more, consider giving us a like and even subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos including tips, tricks, and tutorials. Happy designing, see you next time.